you guys enjoy this series, do drop a like. Let's continue from where we left off here. Seth. Hey, John. Hey, partner. You what you need? Ready to help me? Not quite. Not quite ready. You see, I wasted a bunch of time looking for that last bit of math. And I got to thinking, Moses was a liar. And I imagine myself doing all kinds of unpleasant things to his corpse. <laughs> and then I realized... Realized you were sick in the head? That you needed to move <laughs> on with your own limited time on Earth? No, nope, partner. I realized Moses were no liar. The issue was Aiden O'Leary, who said he had the body. Aiden died in that flu epidemic, and the bodies weren't even buried yet. I, 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 Got the body sitting in the back of that wagon behind you? Yes, sir. You're not even gonna wait until they're buried before you... <laughs> well, they don't care, do you, boys? Honest folk, off to a better place. Apart from that Aiden O'Leary fella, I never liked him. They say he lay with his sister. I don't like women, partner. I don't. Not since Nana died. Seth, what are you going to do with those bodies? I'm going to take them back to a nice, quiet spot and look for the map. I need the map, partner. I need it. Let's go. We ain't the only ones with an interest in these here fellers. All right. I know a secluded spot where we can search these sleeping beauties. Okay, door. Drive towards a secluded spot. Yeah, I forgot how fast the wagons Keep were in this left. game compared to Red Dead um, Redemption 2. The wet. Okay, I don't want to go through town with that. Come on, don't be shy. What did you say? I didn't say nothing. Are you talking to them? So what if I am? I feel less alone with them than in a crowd of people. The way I see it, they lost their souls just like me. You're truly a sick man, Seth. You remind me of why I hate people. For a man who kills so much, you sure seem to have a problem with the dead. But kills everyone in the end. <laughs> they ain't so different from you and me. Aside from them being dead and rotting, I guess they ain't. All right, Seth, calm down. You talk to the corpses and I'll drive the wagon. They're coming after us! Get us out of here! Got them all. Let's go. We're uh. Them horses. I'm gonna look for the map back here. You try to shake those damn rednecks. Who's got a kiss for set? There's some bullets on this. One. Better than a poke in the eye. So I guess this is goodbye. Are you hiding something? Oh, you naughty little boy! Meeny, meeny, mighty mo. Oh, look here! I found me a few bullets! Sorry there ain't time for a burial, partner. Yeah, so in hardcore mode, you gotta really use Deadeye like me, especially when you're riding. When, you're, when it comes to ground combat, it's not that bad. But when it, um, but when you're when you are riding a horse, um, uh, when you're riding a wagon, you need to use Deadeye, or you're um, you're gonna be screwed. Where's my map? Come on. Oh, great, more. Tumbleweed! That's where I was headed! Keep going! 
Yeah, see how hard it is to um uh, to use free aim when you're on a wagon, and the enemies are just running around like crazy. So yeah, in this time period, um, uh, if you were um you know cre searching bodies is creepy enough, but there wasn't that much uh medicine wasn't as good as it is today, and so somebody like Seth would definitely get so many diseases from uh from searching all those bodies. Maybe then you can take a bath. I reckon I'll sit here a while trying to figure this out. I'm gonna be rich. When you're done with that, get over to Fort Mercer. I need you inside that place. After I find my treasure, mister. Yeah, so this is Tumbleweed, so yeah, um... Uh, you see, Tumbleweed's completely abandoned. It was because the train the train tracks did not go through it. Here we had the general store, right? This was a gunsmith, this building here. Oh, can I... Couldn't go inside, so. The cool thing is, though, that you can explore the, um... You can explore the mansion inside, which you couldn't do in the, um, Red Dead Redemption 2, and, uh... Wonder what happened to the Tumbleweed Sheriff. Curious on that. And the saloon. Rockstar did recreate this town, a dead town, uh, back to life in Red Dead Redemption 2. This is where they play poker. Um. Oh, it's like that, is it? Huh? Not talking to Seth today? Oh, the old silent treatment. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Hey, Seth. Oh. Oh. Seth, come back here. Oh, hey, partner. I was just looking for you. Looking for me? What? Over there? How you doing? I'm good. Well, uh, see you later, partner. Where you going, partner? Nowhere. <laughs> okay. Nowhere wouldn't happen to be where that thing you're looking for is kept, would it? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Come on, partner. <laughs> okay, I was just uh, fooling. <laughs> partner, uh... You know, the thought of that treasure does funny things to me. According yeah, he to probably the thinks that John wants it. That big abandoned house. Yeah, you're gonna get jumped in this part, I remember this. Yep, here it happens. Did you see these fellers? Dubious as they look, I figured they must be with you. Kill them all, mister! Yes, yeah, so I'm glad I kept doing hardcore instead of um regular because it is much more challenging. He's still alive. What the? Okay, yeah. Okay. 
Got him. I'll drop the hundred fools like you. Or shotgun rounds. Okay. I can't lose that treasure. Not now. You gotta help me. You gotta go now. It's our last chance. It's locked. Let's try around the back. Seth, where did all these fools come from? I always wondered who lived in this mansion. I was really disappointed you couldn't explore this house in Red Dead Redemption 2. They should have let you see what this house looked like before it was abandoned. That's it, partner. Smoke em. Somebody very rich definitely lived here. Think you can just walk in here? Here's the thing about this, the Volcanic Pistol, this is an actual pistol uh, that existed back then, and it's, um, it's design was actually, uh, terrible. Uh, Treasure Hunter outfit? Okay. After all these years, <laughs> it's silk sheets and Parisian whores from now on, mister. <laughs> what the goddamn hell is this? A glass eye. I'm sure whoever that belonged to treasured it very much. <laughs> Stupid liars! Those stupid chicken shit maps! Making a damn fool of me. A glass eye! It's a glass eye! Stop with the tears and help me with Williamson's gang. And you can come up with another excuse to go exhume one of your old friends. Hunting dead man's treasure ain't done me no favors. Sure. Sure. I'm ready for the living. I'll see you and Mr. West Dickens over at Fort Mercer when you gentlemen is ready. I think he'd be even more broken considering that he devoted so much of his life to looking for that treasure and there was nothing there. Uh... Uh, yeah, this is the uh, Tumbleweed Mansion. 
Uh, okay. What have you got for me? Okay. Yeah, find a few dollars here and there. Okay. So yeah, um, what I was saying about the volcanic pistol is this was an actual pistol that existed, but almost no one would carry this gun in the, in the West. Um, I think the volcanic pistol is also very expensive, correct me if I'm wrong. Basically, what the volcanic pistol is, is you took a lever-action design and put it into a pistol. So it's a lever-action pistol. For people that don't know what a lever action is, a lever action is basically a gun that has a lever on the bottom. And uh, you, when you press down on the lever, um, uh, what it does is it cycles the next round when you, when you press down and you pull it back up. It cycles the next round. Lever actions work in a tube magazine. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why lever action rifles can carry so much ammo. A lot of people wonder, where's the magazine in a lever action? Well, the lever action uh, rifles have a tube magazine. So basically, in a lot of, like, in bolt action rifles, for example, most bolt action rifles, uh, you have, you know, an internal magazine where just basically the rounds are just stacked like this. And so, you know, when you pull the bolt, when you cycle the bolt up, it cycles the next round. It ejects the casing, um, uh, and it cycles the next round in. How a lever action basically works is there's a big tube. And when you, um, when you cycle the bolt from that tube, it goes up into the chamber, and then you just keep um, cycling. So it's basically like a long line of bullets that's right underneath the barrel. That's basically um, uh, with a lever action. But here's the thing about it is lever actions typically do not use also sharp rounds. Uh, they, use, um, they use rounded rounds. Uh, the reason for that is because a sharp round, it could actually strike the primer. The primer's a little part of the bullet at the back. And if that actually strikes, it could actually cause everything to go off. So that's why, um, uh, that's why you don't really have, um, you know, lever actions using sharp rounds. There are a few exceptions, though. One of them is the Labelle 1886. The Labelle 1886 is actually a bolt-action rifle, French rifle. It was actually the first rifle that I think used smokeless powder that, uh, that had a tube magazine. It's a very weird design in a bolt-action. Bolt-action rifle is a tube magazine. You almost never heard of that. But, um, that one, I forget what the, um, I forget what the, um, uh, what the Labelle had exactly, but the Labelle, even though it, it did, it had the capacity to take sharp rounds, it had a specific feature to prevent that, that other lever actions didn't have. I forget what it was, but I know the French did think of that, though. Got a horse-breaking job here. Let me show you guys this activity, too. But yeah, the, um reason that the lever action design did not work in a handgun is because handgun is typically something you want to fire really quickly. Um, uh, you know, uh, single action revolvers where you have to pull back the hammer every time worked a lot better. It's just the design of it. It just wasn't reliable in a handgun. It, it just, it just didn't work. Okay. Why, why can't I? Okay. Okay, horse breaking Easy. job here. Easy. Just, uh, Damn. Just stay there. Don't move. You'll be fine. Relax. That's it. Uh, got it. Take the horse to the stable. So yeah, I've gotten much better at this. I sucked at this when I first started, but now I'm much better. Damn fine riding. That was fast work, son. Okay, eight dollars. Okay. Oh, it was a quick eight dollars. That's um. 
Okay, let's go see Mr. Nigel West Dickens. Ah, oh. oh, Mr. Marston. How are you, sir? I'm all right. I met up with your friend, Seth. Oh, <laughs> Seth of the Dead, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Interesting fellow. <laughs> you don't meet many men these days with the moral fortitude to cut straight to the chase like that, do you? <laughs> Thankfully not, Mr. West Dickens. Yes, uh, contemporary society is remarkably harsh on professional exhumers. But did you know that in ancient Egypt, it was an art form valued more highly than literature? <laughs> I believe Seth comes from that school of thought. <laughs> How very interesting. Look. You thought any more about our plan? Ah, your plan, dear boy. Your plan. I am merely the help, uh, not mercifully the arbiter of wisdom. What you are, dear boy, is the man whose life I've saved twice now. A man who sells lies and deceit to unwitting people. A man who, if he doesn't help me, I won't think twice about putting a bullet through his skull. <laughs> to the vultures myself. Uh, uh, you see, Mr. Marston, you have the exterior of a violent man, but the soul of an angel, and that is what I think I cherish most about you. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, <clears throat> but before we can attend to your particular problems, uh, um, oh, we need some extra lubricant to oil the machinery of business. And uh, this being America, <clears throat> That lubricant with which we concern ourselves <coughs> is money. Money? <coughs> what are you talking about? Oh, we need weapons. Armor plate for the wagon. Extra hands. And I need oh. some danger money. So let's sell some more of these cures. <laughs> sell cures? Around here? Do you want to see me lynched? <laughs> no, the sport of kings, racing, my friend. The sport he only of takes kings, one. a noble activity, without reproach. Exactly the kind of activity where a lying, cheating degenerate like myself can prosper. <laughs> Come, let's finish the loading and we'll discuss it as we drive. <laughs> Now, sir, do get to preach. So, um, uh, what I was saying about, um, uh, about, uh, Seth also earlier, is Seth, even though how unstable is he is, Seth fellow, does is keep not? his word in the end to John, say interesting. More deeply disturbed. I can see why you two get along. I see the good in everybody, John. It's a flaw of mine. I have a soft spot for life's flotsam and jetsam. Connection with him more like, you and Seth have a lot in common. You both rob people for one. Mind you, at least he waits until they're dead. Oh, my dear boy. Nobody is more critical of drinkers than a drunk who's mended his ways. What are you talking about? Come on now, John. I've heard about you. You spent your life robbing people. It's a little inappropriate to be taking the moral high ground now. I had the courtesy to put a gun in their face. Whatever helps you sleep easily at night. We stole from those who had too much. We tried to give to those who had too little. A Robin Hood with spurs. Oh, romantic. You're expecting to believe that poppycock? Maybe I'll have the good fortune to be able to leave my nefarious life behind one day and work on the government's dime. Don't talk about things you don't understand. Dear, oh dear, simmer down, my boy. You need to start appreciating your friends more. Folks around here don't see you as any different from Bill Williamson. I didn't think I'd have to huckster snake oil and dig up the dead, that's all. Take it from me, John. Collaboration is the key to success. I can help you. Seth can help you. It's business. Nothing more, nothing less. There's no need to make it quite so personal. Suits me. So yeah, so um, uh, there's a lot of dialogue that you have because 
the weird thing about Red Dead Redemption is that there's a lot of missions where you're actually not driving. Somebody else is actually driving. And so you have the option of skipping to the destination or just riding with them. Uh, and a lot of, you know, people when they do playthroughs, they skip through this all the time. And I hate when people do that, personally, because there's a lot of important dialogue that you learn about these characters' backstories uh, when you're anyway, riding with them. We must talk about the race. Yes, the race. Oh, come on. Time to purge that negativity and start thinking like a winner. You're going to have a whale of a time. They've been holding these chariot races in New Austin for as long as I can remember. And we need the money. Why aren't you racing then? Me? Oh no, not my thing at all. You have already proved yourself more than adept at the reins, my dear boy, and under some stress. These races are Byzantine in their ferocity, and the terrain is treacherous. People will do just about anything to win. Men die. It's a marvelous spectator sport. Sounds like fun. And you are my wild card, John. They won't be expecting you. So what's your role in all this? Think of me as your spiritual guide. Do I have to? You are a free man, of course, but I strongly recommend it. Imagine. Just for today, you are not an aging bounty hunter, and I am not an avant-garde business pioneer. No, sir. Today, we are gladiators. Motivation, dear boy. I'm definitely feeling motivated to get the hell out of here. Where are we even going here? Oh, all the way up here. Weird race to have with these wagons. Keep to your manners and let the fester cart pass. But now that's been said, y'all can get to running each other off the road like always. All right now, counting to three. Ready, set, go. Shooting uh, 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 racers or spectators will cause you to be disqualified. <laughs> wow, I'm already taking a massive lead here. Yeah, I don't know if a wagon like this will be able to take a turn like that that quickly. Races like this also depend on the horse that you're using, so... Watch these turns.
guy right behind me is catching up. I'm gonna have to speed up a little bit here. Or somebody decides they want their money back. Fine by me. Wasn't that fantastic? The cheers of the crowd, the thunder of the wheels. The falling rocks, the homicidal maniacs. Oh, come on, John. Even a cold-hearted misanthrope like you must have found that just the tiniest bit exhilarating. Not the friendliest bunch, are they? They take the racing very seriously in these parts, and your participation was not entirely pre-approved. That was clear. Ah, sports born heartache. <laughs> the guilty pleasures of mankind since the dawn of time. I get away from the men we just swindled before you start waxing too lyrical. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I think, uh... Okay, let's see here, is there... Well done, sir. Well done. Having you as a ringer has netted us a fine profit. <laughs> we seem to be wasting time, old man. Oh, patience, my friend. The Trojan horse cannot run before it can walk, if you'll forgive the metaphor. Next, we need to procure some grand and overwhelming firepower. And for that, you need to contact an old friend of mine. Goes by the name of Irish. Irish? Yes, uh, he's an interesting kind of fellow. Um, he usually can be found in uh, Armadillo or some other town around here on some Bacchanalian revel or such. <laughs> Great. An alcoholic arms dealer. What could be better? Three dollars, that's it? Wow, we really got scammed by, uh, 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 Dickens, yeah. Three dollars, wow. What are your deeds to slowly spreading through the countryside? Assisting townsfolk is a good way to further your renown. Okay. Marston, sir! John Marston! <laughs> He's just ignoring Mr. him. Mr. Marston, uh, don't be so childish. Uh, come on, sir, I implore you. I implore you. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So I made a few innocent mistakes when last we met. Uh, but my plan is still sound. Together we can conquer, if not the world, then certainly Bill Williamson. But first, you need me to do you a favor? <laughs> You read my mind. I can only deduce you've been taking my tonic, sir, as instructed. It can give 
the most ordinary of intelligences, a remarkable insight. I'll give you insight. I'll show you what your guts look like. Please, sir, this show of petulance is nothing short of embarrassing. Think for a moment, sir. Think. I'm thinking about how much of my time you're wasting. <laughs> um, sir, sir, I am about to do something which I greatly discourage in all wise and rational men. A selfless act for you, but sir, before I act selflessly, allow me to act selfishly and sell some of my wares. Fair enough. Oh, good, sir. Come, and let's go visit some of our fine friends in the other oil business we have here in Plainview. These men need all the help they can get. So Plainview is an oil field, if I remember correctly. Um, here's the thing about oil in this time period is a lot of people that were poor found oil on their land. And just because you found that oil on your land doesn't make you rich. There is a lot of corruption in this time period, a lot of ways that people, a lot of really scummy things people would do to take land from other people. There isn't as much regulation as there is today. Today, if you find oil on your land, it's yours. But, like, back then, there was a lot more scummy things that people did to get steal it land from other people. Friends! Hard-working souls of uh, Plainview, do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, neurologic, or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article which cures headache, neuralgia, uh, toothache, earache, backache, oh, This man is a fucking charlatan. He just got done swindling us down at Cho Springs with this song and dance. I say we tar and feather him right I now. I say we shoot the uh, bastard. I think it's time to take a business elsewhere. Uh, I apologize if science is not your forte. Good day, one and all. Yeah, very bad. Riding the passenger seat on a wagon is also known as riding shotgun. Boy, his hat. Oh, I got him. I got him too. So, um, uh, that term about riding shotgun, that's actually true, and, um, the thing, the thing about this is, a lot of times when we get into cars today in modern day, we say, I call shotgun, and basically call shotgun means that you, you want to sit in the front. It doesn't mean you're driving, just want to sit in the front. And, uh, that term actually comes from the Wild West, and a lot of people actually do not know that, uh... What that basically was, back in the day in the Wild West, what would happen is, carriages would hire guards to protect their wagon when they were going in between towns. And the guy that was the, in the uh, in the front, the front passenger, would be sitting there with a dull-barreled shotgun. That's actually where the term riding shotgun comes from. Sure ain't very popular. 
kind of up against the weight of plebeian ignorance, my boy. Stay alert. I'm not sure we're out of the woods yet. Maybe you need to think about a change of career. I will never give up my sight. Damn, uh... Stop. Go home, buddy! How can these people harbor such bitterness? Because you well, scammed them? Surprised. That tonic I drank at Ridgewood went through me like a dose of salt. Got 18 rounds left, and I'm trying to make this count. Ah, you're supposed to be protecting me! Might be clear then. Oh, no, we're not. me with the speed with which a group of men can turn from passive sheep into murderous wolves. I'm impressed with how you nearly got us killed back there. Well, yes, so perhaps we should shell the tonics business for a period. Let's say we try our hand at racing again. There's a meet at Rathskeller. You're trying my patience, Mr. West Dickens. Well, I'm sorry, dear boy, but I'm only an aging vendor of exotic elixirs, not the bloody U.S. Cavalry. Forgive me if matters take some time to prepare. Well, at least that time we didn't get scammed. Twenty-five dollars. Um. Gentleman and a scholar, John. Yeah. So um, I guess we'll wrap it up here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy this part. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys. Thank <laughs> you.